Good morning everybody, here we are again. Um, welcome to our service for the South Lakes Methodist Circuit coming from Grange Mance. Uh, so we're here on the uh, 5th of July, it's our 16th service, uh, or 16th Sunday in uh, lockdown streaming online. Um, I don't know whether I should admit this, uh, but every service we've done, I've been wearing my slippers. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, I have to get out of that one day when we start to uh, have services again uh, together in future. Um, but this morning, we just want to say that you're welcome, however you will come and whatever you're wearing, whether you're in your slippers, whether you're in your pajamas, uh, whether you're in bed, whether you've got up, um, everybody is welcome. And we're going to start by singing, uh, welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Uh, this is our uh, one of our Toast Church favourite songs. We thought we'd sung this more often, but uh, we think we've only sung this once in our online services. So, um, yep. Hopefully that's uh, woken us all up a bit. Um, now let's uh, bring our prayers. <clears throat> Loving God, we thank you that your arms are open to welcome every one of us. We thank you that young and not so young, women, men, uh, children, everybody is welcome. We thank you that your love reaches further than we can possibly imagine. We thank you that even though we know that we're not always perfect, you still open your arms and call us to come to you. And so as we gather here, may we know that you are with us. We come with all of who we are. We come with the parts of us that we're proud of, 
and the parts of us that perhaps we're not so pleased about. The times this week when perhaps we've been short-tempered and grumpy. The times when we couldn't be bothered to do the good things that might have helped others. The times when we worried mainly about ourselves. We bring those parts of us this morning, knowing and trusting that you love us, that you have power to renew us and transform us. And so we offer you all these prayers together in this place, wherever this place might be for us, knowing that we are connected with one another in your love and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we're going to use, so that to continue our prayers, we're going to use Psalm 145, which is one of the readings for today. And we're going to uh, read this uh, responsively. So I'll say the words in light type, and then if you can all join in the bold type. I won't be able to hear you from here. I can only hear the people in my house, obviously. But uh, let's join in this hymn of uh, praise. The Lord is loving and merciful, slow to become angry and full of constant love. He is good to everyone and has compassion on all he made. All your creatures, Lord, will praise you and all your people will give you thanks. They will speak of the glory of your royal power and tell of your might so that everyone will know your mighty deeds and the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Your, your rule is eternal, eternal and you are king forever. The Lord is faithful to his promises. He is merciful in all his acts. He, he helps, helps those who are in trouble. trouble. He, he lifts, lifts those who have fallen. And we're very glad that God is with us in our weakest moments to strengthen us. But we're going to continue to celebrate God's goodness with a hymn which I'm not sure whether we've ever sung this at Grange. We might have done. Um, let me just find my music. It's a challenging one a little bit because it's one of the very few hymns, not many pieces of music, are in 5-4 um, uh, time. Five beats in a bar. I hope it'll stay open. Andrew and Sue were singing it before the service. Thank you to Andrew and Sue for their music, and that's really helpful. So if you were listening a bit before we started, um, hopefully this won't be hard to pick up. The main challenge is whether I can get the rhythm right. That's Sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry.
I like that one. Maybe when uh, when we can gather together again, it would be a good one to uh, to sing in church. Uh, we're going to have our gospel reading now, uh, which is read for us by Glenda. Thank you, Glenda. And it's from Matthew chapter 11. Our reading this morning comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 11, reading verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. Now to what can I compare the people of this day? They are like children sitting in the marketplace. One group shouts to another, we played wedding music for you, but you wouldn't dance. We sang funeral songs, but you wouldn't cry. When John came, he fasted and drank no wine. And everyone said, he has a demon in him. When the Son of Man came, he ate and drank, and everyone said, look at this man. He is a glutton and a drinker, a friend of tax collectors and other outcasts. God's wisdom, however, is shown to be true by its results. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you wanted it to happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the Lord I will put on you is light. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. So, as I said, it's our 16th Sunday in lockdown. We stopped uh, meeting together physically for services in the middle of Lent, our first online service was on Mothering Sunday. We've been through marking Palm Sunday and Holy Week with Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. We celebrated Easter. We've then followed the 50 days through from Easter to Pentecost. And then immediately after Easter, we were into June and it was Bible month. And uh, we uh, enjoyed the story of the Book of Ruth, which we just finished looking at last week. But now we are well and truly into what the church calls ordinary time. Now, ordinary time doesn't mean boring, unremarkable time, although it might feel like that in comparison to the times when we're celebrating festivals. It just means time that is ordered, time that is numbered, counted week by week. We start counting the weeks of ordinary time after Christmas is over, after Epiphany. And then we pause for Lent um, and then Easter and Pentecost. And then we pick up ordinary time and start counting again the week after Pentecost. Today is the 14th Sunday in ordinary time. The church year has these rhythms of solemn times and times of celebration, times when we're preparing and getting ready and, um, and even repenting, that's a bit of a, um, a word we don't use very much these days, and times when we're joyful. Sometimes that might feel in tune with how we are, and other times it might feel against um, what we're naturally feeling and going through in life. Sometimes uh, the church year is really very out of sync with the world. In Advent, as we're preparing, getting ready, um, perhaps uh, you know, traditionally people would have fasted to prepare themselves. 
Um, and that really goes against the grain of what's happening in the world around us in December when everyone is starting to celebrate Christmas already. This year, it has felt especially strange to be celebrating Easter and Pentecost without being able to gather together and knowing especially that so many people are grieving. In many ways, now that we're through all of those festivals, ordinary time perhaps feels more relevant than ever when we almost have nothing particular to focus on except marking time as it passes. Matthew chapter 11 starts with John the Baptist in prison sending his followers to Jesus uh, to ask them a question. John the Baptist is renowned um, for his challenging lifestyle, for living in the wilderness, for wearing rough clothing, for eating locusts and wild honey, wild food that would be available to someone who had no money to buy it with or just wasn't spending money on it. And John the Baptist was telling people to repent and get ready and prepare the way. And he was criticised by lots of people, especially those in authority, for being, well, a bit weird, really. And it's confusing, I think, for John and his followers to see Jesus, who by comparison is living a really joyful life. How could both John the Baptist and Jesus be of God? How could they both be part of the same message from God to the world? So as we pick up the story today, Jesus says that the way the world is responding to them and their message is a little bit like children having fun, calling out to people in the marketplace, dance with us. But nobody's willing to join in with that celebration. But then when the children are sad, no one's willing to share that sadness with them either. Some translations are a little bit confusing because um, it says, it says now to what can I compare the people of this day? They are like children uh, sitting in the marketplace. Well, if you go back to the, to the Greek, it doesn't really say they are like children. It says it is like children. Um, and perhaps it's the whole circumstance and situation that's being described as being uh, like this rather than directly this generation being like those children. Um, so in a sense, perhaps the children are John the Baptist. Those children are Jesus. When John the Baptist called people to fast and repent, they thought he was crazy. When Jesus called people to celebrate, they disapproved of his partying and, and perhaps especially of the people that he chose to party with. It makes me think a little bit of how things are at the moment. Um, I wonder how many of you have felt that all the time over these last recent months you've been certain of the right thing to do and the right way to behave. I know I haven't. Uh, there have been so many different voices calling out different messages. People saying, stay at home, it's not safe. And other people saying, we shouldn't be afraid, we should go out. There have been some voices in the midst of all that calling people to go out and join in protests and others saying that's completely irresponsible. There are people now saying we should all be wearing masks whenever we're out in public. And there are other people saying, well, masks really don't make any difference. And it's hard to know which voices we should listen to. And I feel this particularly acutely um, in, for the church that all through lockdown there have been some voices in the media saying the church should have its doors open, we should be welcoming people, inviting people to come and pray and saying that closing our buildings shows that the church is afraid or doesn't care about people, isn't interested in the community and is only thinking about itself. Um, of course, legally, we've been told we had to close, so, so in a sense, we haven't had to fight that too hard. Um, but it's a real difficult thing to know what's the right thing to do. And here in Grange, I don't think we're going to be opening our doors for a while yet. Uh, we're going to be thinking about it in our church council meeting in um, not very long. Um, but we want to wait 
not because we don't care about people, but because we do care, because we want to keep people safe. And so we'll carry on being here online um, for as long as we need to be. And, and we hope we'll carry on being here online even when we do begin slowly to gather again. But it is exhausting to live with this constant push and pull of competing opinions and with uncertainty about what's the right thing to do. It's exhausting to be constantly worrying what's the right thing. It's a heavy burden to carry. And so I think it's especially relevant that Jesus goes on to say in this reading, come to me all you who are tired from carrying heavy loads and I will give you rest. And so whether you're weary from extra work and struggle and the pandemic has made you busy and loaded extra responsibilities onto you, or whether you're weary because the time seems to drag on and every day is the same, or whether you're weary because you're caught up in this constant battle of what's the right thing, these competing views and trying to work out the right way through it. Whatever causes your weariness, I invite you to hear Jesus say those words to you today. Come to me, all you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Those are really well-known words and they're very comforting. But I also find them a little bit puzzling and contradictory because Jesus goes straight from talking about rest to telling people to put on his yoke, to put on what is a tool for a working animal to wear, to be able to pull things. And uh, we've got a picture here of oxen ploughing in a paddy field, uh, wearing a yoke that, uh, that connects them together. And when I hear Jesus say, take my yoke and put it on you, I want to go, just hang on a minute. You told me to rest just now. Please can I have a rest for a moment before you make me work again? He says, take my yoke and put it on you and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in spirit and you will find rest. For the yoke I give you is easy and the load I will put on you is light. If I'm honest, I find this quite hard to hear and to understand because the things that we do for God often don't feel very much like rest at all. Maybe, maybe that's sometimes because we're just somehow doing it wrong. Um, maybe doing the wrong things or in the wrong way or trying to do them in our own strength. But I can't really believe that that's the whole story. I don't think we're supposed to just sit back and leave it all to Jesus. Um, but it's hard to know how we do this work um, in a way that makes it seem easy. I wonder if part of it is a recognition that sometimes the burdens that we're carrying are important. The things that weigh us down and make us weary are important. They're things that matter, whether it's campaigning or protesting or whether it's um, caring for people, uh, whether it's the daily work we do. So many things are important, they matter. And it's not that Jesus asks them to put them down. He doesn't say, give up on those things and leave them behind because all you need to do is sit down and rest. Instead, Jesus invites us to bring those things to him because actually he's offering to share that load with us and to help us carry it. And so I look at this picture of these oxen ploughing and try and understand looking at that. Uh, uh, their yoke doesn't look very comfortable to me. I'm sure there must be ways to make something that's more comfortable. But there are other things in that picture that help Jesus' words come alive for me. And the first thing is that I look at what they're doing and I think, well, here's a reminder that the work those oxen are doing is purposeful work. It's work that needs to be done to prepare the ground for growing a crop. And 
and I think it's the same with Jesus. I don't think Jesus asks us to do anything that's pointless, even if it sometimes might be hard to see the purpose of what we're doing. There is meaning in everything that Jesus calls us to do. The second thing is that I look at that pair of oxen and I see one that's stepping confidently ahead. It looks like it knows where it's going. The other one perhaps looks a little bit less certain. Perhaps sometimes that's how it is for us, feeling uncertain about the way we should go and the work we should be doing. But Jesus here in this reading invites us to come and learn from him, to work beside him. And I can imagine that once both those oxen in that picture are pulling together as equal partners, it really must make a huge difference to the ease of the work that they're doing when they're able to coordinate and pull together. And that just makes me think how amazing for Jesus to invite us to be equal partners beside him in doing the work that God calls us to do. And the third thing, I've left till last, what perhaps shouts to me most loudly from that picture, look at the awful squelchy mud that they're going through. Um, I, I, the, when I looked this up, I think it said it was a paddy field and, the, and paddy fields are very, very wet for growing rice. But I look at that awful squelchy mud and I'm tempted to think, wouldn't it be better to be sitting um, kind of, you know, comfortably in the, in the cab of a tractor uh, out of that mud, not getting your feet dirty. In fact, not just feet, but I'm sure that mud gets everywhere. But then, I'm no farmer, but I imagine that trying to plough a field like that with a tractor uh, would be near impossible. I think a tractor would get stuck um, well and truly in mud like that. Seeing that mud speaks to me of how Jesus works alongside us, even when life leads us into the most horrendous muddy mess. We're not alone in it because Jesus is not afraid to tread right in it beside us. Jesus isn't kind of keeping clean and shouting, um, shouting instructions from the sidelines. He's right there beside us and we keep on going together. I'm still not sure that the loads that we pull are always easy. But if we are going to find ourselves in the mud and the mess like this, which at times we are, that's just how life is, I would much rather be pulling the load together. And so I pray that as we reflect on these words of Jesus, that we can hear him calling us, whether we're in times of rejoicing or times of mourning, um, that we can hear him call us and that we can trust um, and follow him and that we can find rest and refreshment in working in partnership beside him in all that he calls us to do. Amen. We're going to sing again a hymn which I know is a favourite of many people. We're going to sing Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
And so let's bring our prayers to God. Let's bring to Jesus the things that have been weighing us down. The burdens that we have been carrying in our own lives. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Bring to Jesus the burdens you carry for others, for those that you love and care for. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Ask Jesus to show you what is weighing on his mind and heart at the moment. The load that he wants you to share with him. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Sometimes we sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. Bring to God now the needs of his world. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So let's now share together in the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Amen. Our last hymn is Lord of Creation, to you be all praise. And we're going to sing this in four instead of three. As we leave this gathering, we pray that God will lead us into freedom, in service and in song. Let's share the grace together. May, May the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So we hope to see you next week. God bless. Best of all is God is with us, God will hold and never fail. Keep that truth when storms are raging, God remains, though faith is frail. Best of all is God is with us, life goes on and needs are Challenge strangely warmed. 
Oh. 